Back inside our favorite place, we're at the Reserve inside Wellington's, and it's the Blend After Dark from the Reserve here in Northwest Arkansas, hanging out with one of our best people here. It's Sam Ventura from Crux Cigars. What's up, my friend? Howdy. Hey, man, I'll tell you what, I see you, and I and I just get excited. It, it, I would say it's youth, it's rock star, it's what, to me, the future of cigars are, man. So, so, so first of all, thanks for being on the show, and just tell us about this whole process for you. I mean, you're a Southern California guy, right? Bartender. Bar, yeah, I'm, I'm a Southern California guy. Clearly we're from, you know, Orange County, LA County. Okay? You're a bartender, a stand-up comedian, and now you're slinging sticks. Well, you only scratched the surface. I was also a correctional officer. No way! Uh, I've also worked in production, um, both, well, different types of production. I'll just say that. Were you making, family friendly. Were you making adult movies? Uh, I did work for an adult movie company for a little while. Uh, behind the scenes, don't worry. Um, long story, we won't go into that. He was but... really a stunt penis, but we won't get into that, so. <laughs> no comment. Um, yeah, I, uh, you know, I've had many jobs. I've had, I've had a lot of interests. I've had a lot of opportunities. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I get, I don't want to say I get bored easy, but it's always struck me as odd that you're supposed to decide what you want to be when you grow up, when you're 17 years old. Right. And that you're supposed to just pick one thing and never veer from that. Right. Now, some people do that. Some people are fortunate enough where when they're 17, 18 years old, 20 years old, they, they have something and they go, that's what I want to do. And they go after it. And that's what they end up doing for the rest of their lives. But I'm not that guy. I'm, I'm not quite a Renaissance man, but I'm the kind of guy that I just, I wanted different experiences. I wanted to try some different things. Um, and, and this was all well before I'd even had my first cigar. Um, and I, I fell into bartending actually right after I left the LA County Sheriff's department as a correctional officer. Um, I just got tired of sitting in jail all day and literally. watching dudes do pushups. Yeah. That's literally what I did. Cause I was actually born blind in my right eye. So yeah, I know. Right. So I, I can't look directly at the camera cause you'll see this eye start to go wonky, <laughs> but, um, I, I could never be a full sworn officer. I could never promote. I could never go any further. Right. So about four years in, I realized that sitting in jail, I was 21 years old, you know, sitting in jail, watching. Wow. I mean, that's, men, a, that's a lot for a 21 year old. Yeah. Yeah. When most of my friends were partying and they had their fun, kind of get it out of their system jobs. I went serious job, good benefits, you know, government made some lifelong friends. And, and I'm very glad that I did it. But I just realized it wasn't for me any longer. So I actually went to bartending. Right. Um, and, and that's what I had done most of my life on and off, um, most of my adult working life, because you work less hours, you make more money. Mm-hmm. What more could you want? A lot of perks. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're 35, 36, 37, and your knees are like, stop. Um, and your back is like, no, I'm not doing this anymore. So wow. um, I transitioned out. But yeah, I, uh, I kind of lucked into the cigar industry. Um, I started smoking cigars about 14, 15 years ago, okay. um, about 14 years ago, uh, a buddy of mine, I actually, I was working for the, for MGM studios mm-hmm. and, um, I was, I had an interest in writing a story and uh, I had never written a screenplay before. So a buddy of mine, who's a producer, writer, director, actor, you know, um, he, he agreed to help me out. And so we, we met at this cigar bar in Beverly Hills, California. Um, Buena Ventura, I believe it was called. Buena Vista. Or Buena Vista. Buena Thank Vista you. Cigar yes, Club. Buena Vista. On Little Santa Monica. On Little Santa Monica. Yeah. Rico. Yeah. I remember Rico, but I, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so we went there and at that time I had only had one cigar in my life and that was a Swisher Sweet <laughs> on February 13th, 1998. Now why, why do you remember February 13th? I got my first tattoo that night. Yes. I got my first tattoo February 13th, 1998. And my buddy John took me to the took me to the shop, and he had already had his first tattoo. So, I was 18 years old, and as soon as we're done, he like pats me on the arm. He goes, "Oh, you're a man now." I go, "Yeah, <laughs> right." Not even close. I don't know if I'm a man yet. <laughs> he goes, uh, "He goes, yeah." He goes, "You're a man now. What do you want to do now?" It's like, let's do more man shit. <laughs> I realize we're 18 years old. We can't really. We do can't much. do anything. Yeah. He's like, "Well, like what?" I go, "Let's get a cigar." Mommy. Never in my life have I thought about smoking a cigar at that point. So you went to your corner liquor store. We went to 7-Eleven. <laughs> yes, because that's where all the fine cigars And are. got Swisher Sweets, and I want to say I smoked about half of it. Didn't get sick, but definitely learned my lesson. Oh, my um, gosh. So I, I had not touched a cigar for, for a few years, quite a few years, probably about close to 10 years. 
Um, and then, uh, yeah, my, my buddy Lamond, we, we met to do this writing project and he grabs a cigar and he's, you ever smoke cigars? I said, well, you know, I smoked a Swisher Sweet once. No, these are real cigars. So he, uh, he gets me a uh, Arturo Fuente Chateau Natural. Ah, that's a good friend. And he taught me how to smoke. Oh, and what? gradually I got into it, got into it, got into it, got into it. And then um, next thing you know, I fast forward to now and I'm pretty much getting paid to smoke cigars for a living. So yeah, me too. So I'm, dreams do come true. I'm with, I'm with you, my brother. So your story is, is, is a fascinating one because you, you end up with Crux. You, you've been out of the places before in, in the industry. Yes. So you're at, you're at Crux and you become the first sales executive, like, like a staff employee, right? Right. And it, oh, by the way, it's January of 2020. Yes. And a little thing called COVID busts loose on your ass. Yes. Ass. Yes. So How was that? So the, how Crux, do you manage that? Crux had had people that, have, that, had, that had been partnered and worked with them before, but they hadn't had a, a full-time direct sales rep at that point. So I actually met the VP of Crux, Casey, mm -hmm. um, traveling. Casey was, Hogan, right? Casey Hogan, yes. Casey when, Hogan. I was, when I was um, traveling with a different company. And he and I kind of became friends. I would say friends, he'd say acquaintance, but whatever. <laughs> we got to know each other and um, ended up, the opportunity came up and uh, I jumped on it because very rarely in this industry do you get the opportunity to be the first like official rep, I'll say, because yeah. they definitely had people that had helped them out before. Sure. I didn't reinvent the wheel by any means, but with, with most companies, you get a job as a rep and you're, you're going to take somebody's place. You're, you know, somebody moves on, somebody retires, somebody gets fired, whatever it is. So you're either going to have big shoes to fill if they were good, or you're going to have an apology tour to make if they weren't. Um, but it's kind of hard to, to start out on your own and to kind of like set your own reputation, yeah. make your own mark. Well, I, I looked at my future in this industry, just my future in general, wherever I end up in 10 years, if I'm a sales manager, you know, a vice president, or if I own my own company or whatever it is, I want to make sure that my toolbox is as full as possible. Right. So if I've never helped build a brand, then there's that box that I can't check. So how can I tell somebody how to do something, how to build something if I've never done it myself? So the opportunity presented itself. And yes, I started January 20th, 2020. And got my account list um, and, and Casey had done a good job of building some foundational accounts in my territory, but it was up to me to really get after it. I had seven weeks of momentum and I was gung ho and I was like, we're going to do this. And then all of a sudden, Hey, I need you to stay off the road for a couple weeks. This COVID thing, we want to see It'll what happens. It'll be over in a couple months. Yeah. A month or. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then that two weeks turned into just about five and a half, almost six months of sitting at home going crazy. Yeah, Stir I crazy. I bet. Yeah. So I would imagine you, you've got an interesting look. I, I love it. You got that sort of rock star kind of look. What was the impression when you walk into these cigar shops? You know, because you're not in California. You're not in New York. You're in, you know. Texas. You know, you're in Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas. When you roll up in there, are they saying, who is this guy? Was it difficult? Was it easy? Was it welcoming? It was not as difficult as you might expect. Um, I think luckily the, the climate we live in now, um, tattoos are no longer that taboo or, mm. or, you know, depending on what it is, right? right? And none of my tattoos are offensive. None of them are have any sort of connotation. You know, I have an angel sleeping on my arm. You right. can't really get mad at that, right? right. Um, but it was uh, definitely some, some of the territory I cover has some very traditional uh, middle America. Sure. Uh, old old fashioned values. So I definitely would get some looks. Um, oddly enough, I would I would also I, I would often get mistaken for reps for different brands right. that I had never worked for because right. they have more of that edgy alternative kind sure, of marketing sure. and appearance. Sure. Um, so that was always kind of a, a, a kick I got is I'd walk in and hi I'm Sam and they'd be like oh you must be with so and so and I'd be right. like no and I'd be like so and so I'd be like no <laughs> and I'd be like I'll tell you if you give me and then. Um, so it, it, it's been a lot more welcoming, but I think that's a testament to the industry. Yes, I the agree. The cigar industry is a very welcoming, unifying kind of industry. It's a very communal thing. And that's actually what drew me to it. Mm -hmm. I was in the bar business for so long and there's a million bars out there and 
if you're sitting at a bar by yourself, you don't give a shit what the guy next to you is doing, what he does, what he likes, what he doesn't like. You have, you just want to sit there and watch your TV and drink your beer or your mm-hmm. whiskey or whatever. Mm-hmm. Cigar industry is a lot different. When I started smoking um, a little more frequently when I moved to Texas at my home shop at the time, I, uh, I would sit there and it didn't matter if I had 20 bucks to my name or if I didn't care about money at the time. I would sit there with, you know, people that were 5, 10, 20, 25 years older than me. I remember I used to bring a six pack of Miller High Life <laughs> because it was $7 for six beers and I could focus more of my money on the cigars because mm. that's why I was really there. Mm-hmm. And I remember I was sitting there and I'm sitting in my corner and you know I've got my phone, I'm playing on my phone and there's some older guys at the end that were regulars of this shop and one of them drove there in a Ferrari and they had a $300 bottle of scotch on the table among some bourbons and other stuff. and. And they kept offering it to me. Sure. And I was like, no, I'm good. I got my, my champagne of beers. I got my Miller. Got and finally they keep offering and I go, all right, I'll, I'll take a little bit, right? Yeah. So very graciously, they give me a pour of this, you know, $300 McAllen scotch and drinking it. It's very good. And I'm like, well, you know, it's like showing up to a barbecue empty handed, right? I'm like, well, hey, I don't know if you guys like beer, but I got a couple high lifes left in the, in the fridge. <laughs> and uh, luckily not one of them actually just blatantly laughed at me, but right. it was kind of like, uh, we're good. We're okay, man. Thanks. You know, um, but that, that really just kind of struck me as, you know, these guys that are, that are old enough to be my dad that I clearly probably don't have much in common with, but we have this in common. And that's right. what we do is we sit and I've made a lot of, uh, to reference the movie Fight Club, single serving friends. In, in my in my life yeah. and and I, I really enjoy that because I travel so much and every time I go in a shop I might sit and have a conversation for 45 minutes to an hour um, and I might see you again I might not mm-hmm. but for that time period however short it may be we're we're on the same level no matter how much money you have no right. matter what your political religious or or upbringing background none of that matters when you're in the shop and you're having a good conversation that's that is the we've talked about it so much here on, 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 on After Dark and here on the show that it is such a unifying thing and, and it's so welcoming that, that a guy who maybe doesn't fit the mold, you know, can all of a sudden just, here, have a glass of this $300 scotch and, yeah. and, 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 you're, and you've, you've clicked. So speaking of clicking, so Crux actually, to me, seemed like a good spot because they had just sort of rebranded, reimagined things as you came along. Yes. So there was that so sort of like a... a an empty chalkboard, an, an, an empty palette. Clean slate, yeah. Yeah, so you yeah. were able to go in there. So what is Crux? What is Crux? What's the philosophy? And what do you bring to it? Um, so, yes, we, we did a rebrand in 2019. I, I say we, but it was before I came yeah. on board. And um, completely changed our look. Really, really helped us a lot and helped us stand out in crowded humidors. Mm-hmm. Um, added touches of color to all of our blends and all of our boxes. I'm a big, I'm a big label guy. It, that's, you know, I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm, I'm a cigar guy. I'm by no means an expert, but if I see a flashy, cool label, I'm going to be drawn to that. And, and, and right now you, you gave me the, the Crux Guild and I love the orange band. I, that's what, that's what gets, it hooks me. Well, I busted that out because the colors of, of the reserve at Wellington's are, are orange and it matches see and it just kind of looked right. All right. And uh, I was going to smoke the same one, but I'm still working on this Maduro. So I didn't want to give this up just yet. All right. Okay. Um, but yeah, so. I, I came on board and I, I learned a lot about Crux early on. I had kind of been paying attention and following ever since I met Casey because it was a it was a company that I, I liked their cigars and I liked their their smaller footprint and their kind of family approach. Right. Um, so up until about a month ago, there was only four of us in the company and three of them were cousins. So I'd wow. always call myself the step cousin. Wow. Okay. Uh, you know, they they ran out of family, so they had to hire somebody, <laughs> right? Um, and. Uh, the owner of the company, Jeff Hogan, he started the company. Uh, he started working on the company in 2012, brought it to market in April of 2014. And he he decided he wanted to start a company where it was he was building a brand for decades for the long term, not just to make a quick buck. Right. You know, he had been successful in the industry and some other endeavors he had had. So he, he realized he wanted to go to the next level in the cigar industry. And rather than just you know, send money to a factory and say, hey, send me some cigars, I'll put a band on it. He wanted to learn everything. So from 2012 to 2014, he spent about one week out of every month out of the country learning what I say from seed to stick, learning all about the, the process and yeah. how to blend them. So he actually does all of our blends. Um, he's he's very particular in his blends because he, he wants them to hit everybody's palate the way they want it to hit. Sure, sure. And one of the things he says is first impressions are internal. 
or eternal, excuse me, not eternal. eternal. That's, that's a great call. Um, First impressions are eternal. That's a yes, great line. And that's, and that's a, a phrase I've heard many times over the two plus years I've been with the company. But he blends the cigars to be smooth, flavorful, but clean finishing. And that's that thing where I'll be honest, the first time they told me that, they were like, our cigars are clean finishing. And I was like, it sounds like he got it out of a book, right? But as I started smoking them daily, I would, I would occasionally go back to my old, you know, some of my old faithfuls. And I would notice that I'd get down to that like two inch part, you know, two inch point, And I'd be like, yeah, it's okay. It's... I kind of need to, you know, I, I need a sip of water. Maybe I should go brush my tongue or something. <laughs> but if, if I put this down right now and I don't take another puff or sip or anything, I, I, I have no residual, mm -hmm. you know, bitterness or anything like that. They are very clean finishing. Even our fuller, richer flavored cigars will finish very clean. And, um, he's very particular about that kind of stuff. And, and we, we did a lot with our presentation, um, changing our boxes and, and just making sure that we would stand out and we would draw the eye. And if you're going to take an hour, or hour and a half, two hours and smoke one of our cigars, we want you to have a truly pleasurable, enjoyable experience. Mm -hmm. You work hard for your money. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of options where and how you spend your money, especially when it comes to the cigar industry. So we want to make sure that you feel rewarded when you spend that money on a Crux cigar. Well, so far, so good with this Crux Guild, I'll tell you that. Now, what I bring to it uh, is a little different. Um, I don't know. I, I, I guess I bring the... Yeah, what is your style? You walk into a shop or you, you what is your style? I always say I'm the weird step cousin. I don't know if that's because I, I live in the Austin area or if it's because I have more visible tattoos, because I know I'm not the only one with tattoos. But, oh, yeah. um, I, I'm, all, I'm, I'm all tatted up too. I have a very quirky sense of humor. Um, I've, I'm very obscure with some of my humor. And, and I, I guarantee if, if, if the boss was here right now, I guarantee he'd be shaking his head yes, because you know some of the stuff, I'm surprised I've only had to be asked to take down one Instagram post since <laughs> I worked for the company. Cause, you know, my, my, my Sam Ventura Crux Instagram, little plug there, yeah. is, is my, my main Instagram. And sure. so it's not just Crux stuff. It's all kinds of weird yeah. things, you know? And, um, you know, I, I got married recently and my, my wife has purple hair. And so I dyed my beard and my hair purple for the wedding. And I, I, picked, the, I, I picked the guys up for the wedding, um, the Crux guys, and they're like, ah, oh, purple, huh? <laughs> Like, is yeah, that going to be like, a, is that going to be a new band? Are we going to see a purple band? Um, there's been some discussion of purple. Um, we we do have a couple blends that have not been fully rebranded, so there's yeah. some, there's some purple that has been discussed. Um, but I, I think purple would be great. Um, but it is know. it is royalty, so yeah, yeah. Why not? <laughs> so, as as a, as a as a guy who comes in, you know the the redheaded cousin, the redheaded step cousin, so to speak. Yeah, you know, purple headed step the cousin. purple headed step cousin. Have have you felt that you've made a difference yet? Have you felt like you've come in there? Yeah, and and you brought you brought your style, and so the company is like, well, maybe we need to lean towards Sam a little bit. Well, one one thing I will say about the boys is they've absolutely from day one made me feel like part of the family. Amazing, um, amazing. Both from just treating me like family, which is good and bad, you know, because you always bicker with your brothers sure, or your sure. cousins or whatever. But they they actually value my input. Um, Two examples of that. My first day with Crux, January 20th, 2020. It was a Monday. We hit a couple shops and then we go to one of our shops that uh, one of the owners also owns a marketing company that was instrumental in our rebrand. Mm -hmm. And we're having a meeting, we're talking. And so we've got our price list, we've got our order form, and we had, I, I wanna say it was like four pieces of paper for a new account. And two things I pointed out was one, we don't need that many pieces of paper. We can streamline it to one sheet of paper because when you walk into a shop and you're going to hand an owner yeah. something, they don't want a ream of paper. They want is you know simple, right? Because they because they got stuff to do. Also, our our price list was black and white. Well, our whole rebrand is based on this color palette, mm -hmm. right? And I said, you know, I can already tell, and this has come true. I can already tell that people are going to smoke Crux cigars and be like, oh yeah, I had a Crux the other day. It was really good. Be like, which one was it? And they're like, ah, it was the red one. Ah, it was the orange one. Well, it's funny. That's exactly what happened. That's what you said to me. My, my, my boss said, hey, which, which one do you want? I went, I want the blue one. Yeah. Oh, well, and, and you said to me earlier, yeah, the first one I think I had was the red one. Was the red one. So, so that's the thing. People are going to associate that color. Um, they're not going to be like, oh, I had the bull and bear. Oh, I had the guild. Until they really get more into it and exactly. they start to learn it. And I said, so when we're, when we're going to visit shops, and we're giving out samples and we're giving out information and, and we're trying to get that account opened. 
Um, I think we need to do something on our price list that reflects the colors, whether it's just have a picture of the cigar or do a picture of the band behind the, the blend name. And those two changes, the, the one sheet of paper and the color price list were implemented immediately. And then about two, three months ago, um, I was talking to the boss and we have some, we have some golf hats, you know, some, some baseball yeah. type hats, but they have more of a curve, not really my style. And they're very nice hats, but I just don't really wear them. Right. And well, I, with that, with that, with that head of hair, you can come on, man. Pompadour, you come right? on, brother. Well, so I actually, I, I reached out to our VP. I said, Hey, would you have a problem with me using our logo to have some hats made? He's like, well, what's wrong with the hats we have? Well, nothing, but they're, <laughs> they don't really fit my head as well. It's not really my style. Slow down marketing guy. I'm exactly. Just so I said, I, and he's like, well, what do you want exactly? I said, well, I want more of like the flat bill style, mm -hmm. you know, all black, that kind of thing. And um, he was, and I was like, you know, I'll, I'll just buy some. I just wanted to make sure that it's okay with you if I use this logo and I start wearing this hat. He says, well, send me what you want and I'll get it done. So he puts me in touch with this hat guy and he, he had us, you know, do a run or had his hat guy do a run of these completely different hats than we've ever made before, just based on my request. And that's kind of the thing is it's very rare you're going to get a company that one takes your input day one exactly but also orders a complete different type of swag item that you've never carried just because one of their employees wants it and there's got to be to me that's not only is that freedom but that that gets your creative juices going because that's strike you strike me the conversations we've had that you need to be able to get your input in there. You need to be able, and then and then that, yes, go ahead, Sam, do your thing. That's gonna get you even more fired up. It's gonna get you even yep. more invested. And, and you know, sometimes I need to be reined in a little bit. Sure. Uh, I always say that the, the dynamic between the VP and I is kind of like father and son, even though he's a couple years younger than me. Yeah. Um, I'm the kid that wants everything and I wanna do everything. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah toys. And he's like the dad that works hard for a living and is like, I got to pay the bills. We got to pay a mortgage, settle right, down, you right. can't get every toy every time. <laughs> yeah. um, but it works out. It's a nice balance. Um, they do take my input very seriously. We all come together. Um, and it's not just Casey, the VP, it's Jeff, the owner, it's the other sales guys. Mm -hmm. um, and it really is a very communal family effort. Um, and and I couldn't be prouder to, to be part of the family. Oh, it sounds like an amazing place. Now you are a road warrior. You've got a big swath of territory. What is road life for you? I mean, because I think I think that people maybe not understand what a sales exec does. I mean, because it's not going to oh, the, the shops in your town or in your state. You've got what five, six states? Uh, I touch nine states. Nine. So states. I started with four, and it's gradually grown. Um, I don't know what it is about the road life, but I've always sought that life. Mm -hmm. um, that was one of the appeals when I did stand up was sure. getting to that point where you, you go on the road. Do you feel that doing what you do now and having been a stand-up comedian, is there kind of a parallel universe there? Yes and no. Um, nobody's paid me for jokes yet. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I do get to meet a lot of different people. Um, I, I do have people that will, will come to events to see me. Um, I just did an event in, in South in the Southern part of Arkansas in Little Rock last Friday. And it was just, and it, it was just very, um, I don't know the word I'm looking for, not endearing. Cause that sounds a little too yeah. weird, but it was just, it warmed my little heart, fulfilling. my cold black heart. You were fulfilling. Yeah. Um, some of the people that came out just for the event to see me, um, you know, one guy drove up almost an hour from where he lives. Wow. Um, and so that, that makes you feel good. And it's, it's, um, it's very similar that you're, you're staying in hotels. Uh, you know, I, my wife and I just bought a brand new house and I've slept in it three or four nights. Um, you know, how was that by the way, just freshly out of the gate married and you're never home. Well, luckily my wife works a lot. Okay. Um, you know, she's actually in Florida right now for a golf tournament. So she works a lot. So she definitely, um, isn't just sitting home as a housewife bored, waiting, missing me. Um, you know, I have to send her pictures of myself from the road so she knows exactly what I look like. So when I show up, she's not like, who's this guy that walked into my house? Right. <laughs> um, but she and she's very supportive. You know, she knows that I love what I do. And, sure. And she would never take that away from me. But, um, you know, it, it gets tough. We don't have children. We don't plan on having children. We do have dogs that I miss. Um, and I miss her, of course, but we, we stay in constant contact. And um, I'm to the point now where if I'm home too long, 
Yes. I start to get, exactly. I start to get antsy and I'm like, I, I gotta go. I gotta get out. I gotta, I gotta go. get on a plane. I gotta and, get on the cars. Uh, yeah, I, 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 gotta, I gotta do something, right? So, so my comfort zone, oddly enough, is either in a shop anywhere over the nine states I touch or in my truck on a long drive, listening to a podcast or an audio book with a cigar. Well, hopefully it's uh, you know, the blend that you're listening to. So, so the first thing I always talked about is, so how's the food? I mean, is, is, it, is, it, is it truck stop kind of food? Or, I mean, what's been the best food you've had? Um, well, I, I, mean, just, wh- I mean, Wellington, by the I way. I was going to say. The Polenta Prime. Today is the first time that I did not go with the filet at Wellington's, because okay. that's one of my go-tos. Um, I, uh, I didn't want to eat too much before we get on this, because I didn't want to be passed out. But right. I, I was looking at their menu, and I saw these Nashville sliders. And I tried those, and they were fantastic. OK. Um, I, I definitely eat more fast food than I should. Right. Um, that's kind of one of those things is if I'm going to try to see, let's say five or six shops a day, depending on where I'm at, I don't want to take 45 minutes to an hour to sit and have lunch. I want to get in there get something in my system so I can keep smoking, keep talking, right. keep moving. I will always try my best to have a, a decent sit down dinner. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a, I'm a big chain steakhouse guy. Oh yeah. Um, I love looking forward to recommendations from people in areas where not something I can just get back home sure, in Texas exactly. or in every other state. There's nothing worse than when you go into a town and they're like, oh, we have a, there's a blank. Well, I, I can eat that at home. Yeah. You know, I want something that's Arkansas-ish. Or hey, I want what's something your best that's, restaurant? Applebee's? Okay, yeah, well, well yeah. been there. It's a nice song, but I'm not gonna, I don't wanna, <laughs> I don't, don't want to do that. I'm okay on the song. See, it's, uh, it's, we're gonna get but, fancy. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of, it's a lot of quick serve food. Um, it's hard to eat healthy. Yeah. So I, I have to try to modify my diet. And I actually, for the first time in my life, I actually count calories or look at that kind of stuff. I hear you, brother. Um, but uh, I do definitely get some some tasty treats out of it. Um, sure. You know, I'll, I'll try to spoil myself sometimes. Um, Crux is very generous with allowing me to eat on their dime. So that kind of helps. That was a joke I actually made to my wife. I said, well, you know, once we get the house and move in, I'm pretty much going to be on the road nonstop and I'm going to make longer trips, a regular. And she was like, what? Why? I said, because we're spending all this money on the house. I can't afford to I eat. Can't, so I can't eat. It's mac and cheese at home. And then it's, you know, if I want a steak, I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go out on the road. Right. I'm going to come to Wellington. Yeah. So what is the state of the cigar industry for you right now? Right now, here we are. You're right in the middle of it. What is, is it in a good place? Is it in a bad place? Where, where, what's the cigar business right now? I think overall it's in a good place. One of the one of the silver lining aspects of the whole COVID issue situation is it kind of created a mini boom, I'm and sure. a lot of people are are relishing in that. Yeah, um, a lot of companies are having some trouble with with supply issues, as most of the world is. Um, you know, having just built a house, definitely supply issues are. You know, sure. we had to we had to pivot and make some changes yeah. to some of our design. Excuse me, some of our design stuff because stuff's back ordered and it would throw off your timing. Um, I, I think that it's 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 in a really good place. Something I am noticing, not to get too heavy, is as I said earlier, the cigar industry to me bring it, it's it's a great unifier. It brings people together, right? Mm-hmm. I've been seeing a little more division among different figures, brands, whatever you want to say, groups. Um, and and I'm not, I, I don't think it's that big of a deal right now right but i'm just starting to notice more and people even, are what are marking their side of the sidewalk a little bit or yeah and and people are making some of their disagreements or some of their opposing viewpoints a little more vocal and a little more aggressively vocal i've always said that's how you know things are going well yeah exactly <laughs> uh, that's a good point um but i think overall you know we're all in it for the right reasons for the most part and and we still have that love of of having a good cigar having a good conversation and, and coming together. So I don't think it's anything really to worry about. It's just something I kind of noticed in the last couple of weeks, couple of months. Now, I would imagine, I, I like asking this to people and, and we'll, we'll keep it to work because I know seeing that beautiful bride of yours and your beautiful big house, that's always the best day. It's a good size. What is the best day for Sam Ventura when you're on the road? What, what, is a, what, is, what would qualify as, damn, this was a freaking good day? Wow. I thought you weren't going to throw me any curveballs. That's no, a that's tough not, one, man. Yeah, um, I mean, I mean, you you walk in. I mean, granted, we all want to sell tons of cigars. You all want to make your quota. You want to. You want to. But what, what, what inside of you 
what makes you go, what makes, I always say, what makes your nipples hard? Where you say, you know, this was a freaking good day today. I killed it today. It's the piercing. It's it, Oh, you've got piercing. I'm oh, kidding. I don't, oh, I don't, I don't, right. I don't. Sorry, bad joke. Edit that out. Um, no, that's no, we're no, starting with keep that. Keep that in. Um, no, it, it, it honestly, and, and this sounds like it's, it's uh, BS, but it, there are much less bad days than good days, sure. right? Because because there's am, a passion. There has to be to do this. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, honestly, if, if I didn't have a passion and a love for the industry and for cigars in general, then I would get a job where I did something where I get to be home every night with yeah, my family yeah. rather than, you know. Because that's a sacrifice you're away. making, sacrifice Absolutely. she's making. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, something I, I, I kind of get in my head too much when it comes to some of the aspects of the job. And I always say the biggest stress, the biggest stressors of this job I think are a hundred percent self-induced and it's just okay. what it is. Why is right? that? Why? Because I think I put a little more pressure on myself internally than maybe other people are. Okay. Um, I think I definitely have a little, is that your DNA or is that, is that I got to make my numbers or what, what, what is that? I think it's just my DNA. Yeah. It's just how I've always been. Um, my mom raised me with the mentality that if, if your job is to clean toilet toilets, then they better be the cleanest toilets anyone's ever seen. Mm-hmm. Right. So I always kind of have that in my mind and, um, I, I definitely sometimes when I'm, when I'm out and about, I, I get, I get tiny little touches of like, you know, imposter syndrome where I kind of like, just go, wait, do they, they're going to figure really it out. This? They're going to figure like, it out. Aren't they? How have I made it this long? You know? Um, <laughs> but something I notice is, is there's been many times where I've got a lot of friends in the industry. And one of the unique things about the industry is all of us reps are more like colleagues than competitors, right? Okay. Even though we're working for different brands. And there's been a handful of times where I've maybe, maybe had a stressful day because I haven't had, you know, I haven't really gotten any big orders in the last couple of days or things have been slow or, you know, maybe something goes wrong here or there. And then I'll just kind of, I'll start to get in my head. I'll start to think about it too much and I'll start to kind of like really focus and stress on it too much. And then I'm like, I got to get out of my head. I got to, and the, the, the worst thing I can do is get to the hotel early. Mm. and just sit alone in a hotel room oh, with yeah. shitty cable on yeah. and just thinking about what went wrong, what I should have done, what I didn't do right. But there's so many times where I've had a day like that and then I go to my last stop of the day and I run into you know a rep friend of mine and then the owner's there and we get along. And then 30 minutes after I walk in that door, we're all sitting around laughing, telling stories, having a great conversation, enjoying a cigar. And I completely forget that I had a rough few hours. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm, I guarantee in about three or four hours, I'm going to think of the best ideal day for me. Yeah. But of course we're probably not going to be recording in three or four hours. We'll, we'll, have, we'll have a couple um, more, uh, old fashioned and, yeah, it'll, and it'll yeah. all make sense. I, I should have liquored up before it this. It all makes sense. But, um, no, it, it, it really is harder to have a bad day doing this, yeah. uh, than, than it is to have really good days because it, it, it is what it is. You know, I, I love Arkansas. It's one of my favorite States to travel to. Um, and I've said that many times. I mm-hmm. say it to people all the time. Um, most of the people I deal with, uh, and that's one of the fortunate things about working for a smaller company than we, we focus a little more on quality, not quantity, is I get to work with people that I really enjoy working with. Sure. And I get to go visit them regularly um, and, and have a good time. And I walk in and I give out cigars. So who I doesn't mean, love you're that? You're everybody's right? best friend. Yeah. Yeah, you walked in with uh, you walked with your medicine bag full of yeah. cigars. Yeah, my, like, my sales executive. I was briefcase. like, I like that. I like that a lot. All right, before I let you go, um, I, I asked this of a lot of people. We've, we've, we know how you found out, you know, how the cigar found you. What, what's a good day for Sam Vincero? I know, I know I asked you what you're proudest of, but what's a good day for you? Is, is, is it just, is it the meeting people? Is it, is it the making the sale? Or is it just when you're driving home, just enjoying your, you know, your whole, what you do? Because I see, a, I see happiness. You, you know, you got the whole Johnny Cash thing and men in black, you know, Guy Ferretti of cigars, whatever you want to say. And you're smiling. So what what's happiness for you, man? Um, Because there's something in there that they, that calls that smile. Yeah, it's. Uh, these are tough questions, man. This is this, this is, is the hardest interview is, I've ever this, done. No, nah, this is the easy. Part. Um, a good day for me is a day where I wake up. On the road. Um, I, I, I will go to one of my favorite shops yeah. as my first shop of the day, have a cup of coffee 
um, smoking Epicure Connecticut because it's always my first day, my Ooh. first cigar of the day. Um, and then there, there's a few parts of the territory where every shop I go to, I feel like I'm going home. And mm. I know that sounds weird when I'm not home. A, that's a great, um, that's a great point. And, and don't get me wrong, the majority of my accounts and my shops are, are very welcoming. Um, and, and that's, again, one of the perks of the job. But there's some that I, I've just met some of the greatest people ever yeah, in yeah. this industry. And there's there's some of those days where they all line up in the same rotation and in the same day. Yeah. And and then it's a day that I truly don't feel like I'm working right. at all. It's pretty cool to be San Ventura some days. It's not so bad. Not so bad. Hey, I feel pretty happy. Just got, got to meet you, man. Well, we'll have to compare some me. tattoos later on. Yeah. We'll right. strip down and uh, have the real after dark. That's it. Hello. 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 It's Sam Ventura. Where can we find you on Instagram? Sam Ventura Crux. All right. That's it. Maybe we'll call him Ace later. No, I've been waiting. We did the whole time with the Ace Ventura thing. First time I've heard that. First time? Today, at least. It's, it's Sam Ventura. He's the best. Go follow him.